to come. Please give her a hearty amen as she comes and bring the word of God. Life is like a mountain railroad with an end 
engineer this brain. We must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. Watch the field, the curve, the tunnels. Never falter, never fail. Keep your hand upon the throttle and your eyes upon the rain. Well, blessed Savior, oh, thou will guide us until we reach that blissful shore. Sunday, and we're so thankful. I'm always excited about who gets the money. Everybody gets some money, but nobody, somebody gets the money, and so we're so happy for you. Hope you have a great time today. As, as, as the brother said, he said, I needed this so bad. <laughs> we're glad that we could do it for you in a time of need, so we're thankful for all that God has done, for his love, for his mercy. He's been so good to all of us. And I tell you, all of our military every day are spending their lives in behalf of this, of this country and trying to help other people in a foreign country. We're so, so grateful. And I wish sometime that we had more to give. That is my desire that one day that the bonus will far outweigh a thousand dollars. And it will happen. You know, when you want to do good, God makes a way for you to do it. So I'm thankful for that and all that he has done. It's such a privilege to be in church this morning. We could have been somewhere else. But thanks be to God who let us be here, come to worship him and lift him up in praise. Every military person has ever been to Iraq or Afghanistan or wherever, and you made it back. It was because of the goodness of God that you made it back. Yes, and I thank God for that. My husband had two tours in Vietnam, and... I'm telling you, I, it's not easy for the families left behind. You never know when you're going to get a phone call. You hope that you never get it. We have friends that did get it. I'm thankful that my husband was able to return after two tours, and we're just thankful he's gone, gone to be with the Lord now for 22 years, so he's no longer here. He would have loved this celebration had he been here. I could say, let me do that. He would have wanted to do it, so we're thankful again. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Jeremiah the 31st chapter. Father, we're th grateful this morning because you loved us more than anybody in the world. You always reach out to us and touch our spirit and our life. We thank you because you care about us. I pray, God, that you would minister to these people today, whatever their needs are, that you would grant them according to your precious will. I pray, God, for the anointing upon thy servant, for without you, we can do nothing. With you, we can do anything, and we'll give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 
the 18th verse says, I have surely heard Ephraim bemoaning himself thus. Thou hast chastised me, and I was chastised. As a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke, turn thou me, and I shall be turned, for thou art the Lord my God. Surely after that I was turned, I repented, and after that I was instructed, I smote upon my thigh, I was ashamed, yea, even confounded, because I did bear the reproach of my youth. Is Ephraim, my dear son, is he a pleasant child? For since I spake against him, I do earnestly remember him still. Therefore my bowels are troubled for him. I will surely have mercy upon him, saith the Lord. We want to preach to you a little while this morning. I don't know if everybody is familiar with the fact that God will chastise you if you don't find your way to the right path. You know, everything that he ever did for us was because he loved us. Because he truly cared about us. So Ephraim, which, which, which is just part of Israel, he said, I heard him bemoaning himself. I heard him crying. I heard him uh, when he was going through the pain or what have you. Now, for sure, God is going to some way bring you around if you don't volunteer. Because he paid the ultimate price for you. Because his son went to Calvary paid the price for you and for me, and me to be able to have what we have today. You wouldn't even be able to get out your bed this morning if it wasn't for God. You wouldn't be able to stir around if it wasn't for him. You wouldn't even know your name. You couldn't communicate. There's so many things that we couldn't do if it wasn't for the love of God. I never take it for granted every day of my life to look up and say, thank you for what you've done. I didn't have to be here, but thank you for letting me get here. Thank you because you love me more than anybody in the whole world. And I tell you today, my life is blessed because 50 years ago, I made a decision I was going to serve God. I hope this morning at the end of this service, you will make a decision, I think I'm going to serve God. You couldn't do anything better. If you think you got a good life now, you don't have a good life the way you could have. Because he makes the difference. So Ephraim has sinned. Israel constantly sinned. And God said, I heard you cry. Why is it? Now God really doesn't want to whip you. He really wants you to just voluntarily come. But it's something about man that makes him want to do his own thing. All of us, at some point in time in our life, we said, look, I'm, I'll be glad when I get grown and I can do my own thing and I don't have to answer to my mom or my dad or nobody. You're going to always have to answer to God. You'll never be away from that. I am thankful. I thought, too, I need to get out of here. Uh, my grandmother raised me. I said she was old-fashioned, and she didn't know what she was talking about. That's what I said. I need to get out of here. When I was 16 years old, I ran away from home. If I went when I was 15, they picked me up. For, I wasn't of age, so they would have picked me up. I thought, I'm getting out of this house. You can't do nothing in here but read the Bible and pray. I need to find out what the real world is all about. My grandmother, I, I didn't take me very long to find out that she was right in what she was telling me. And, but I felt like I need to get out and do my thing. So Ephraim is talking about, this is the sense of my youth. Didn't we? Don't most of us have made terrible decisions when we were young? Picking the wrong girlfriend, the wrong boyfriend, upset about many things, couldn't see our way, and all these things. I remember mean, when I left home, it didn't take me but maybe a few months to say, oh, I should have stayed at home. I didn't know what the real world was about, and really at 16, I didn't need to know. But I say to everybody that's in here today, God sees you from the time you understand the accountability that I need to uh, take a, uh, take a, a um, take a, I'm trying to think of the word, be responsible for my sins. You ain't going to get away with it very long. Now, when you're a little kid, you know, they understand they don't know any better, but you start growing up and knowing right from wrong, you got to do some things. God's expecting something of you. And I tell you what, there's nothing like going away 
from everything. We think home is a, not the place you want to be. We want to get out, let our hair down, do some things. And I did all that. Boy, I had a lot of pain. I had a lot of disappointment because I didn't know the world was the way it was. I found out after the fact. Some of us, it's a shame. We don't learn what's really bad for us until we don't walk in it. Made a mess of our lives. Then we sit there and say, I don't know what I'm going to do. Just follow the good things. Follow what God has given us to do. But there's going to come a time in everybody's life that God is going to require something of you. His son paid the ultimate price for our salvation. And I want something back. God has said, I cared enough about you that I was willing to let my only son come and die for you. Now, I want you to give me something back. And I don't think that's too much to ask. Because any parent in this room this morning, if you had to sacrifice your son or your daughter, you would be very angry if the people that they sacrifice for says, we don't really want it. And that's the way people look at God today. Well, I'm not into all that God stuff. Well, he's into you. He's into you. So Ephraim, he said, look, I had to chastise you. I had to whip you. It didn't feel good. But he said he was bemoaning. He, was, he said he chastised me as a bullock unaccustomed to the yoke. I wasn't accustomed to this yoke being put on me. The way a bull or, 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 or a baby calf, uh, you try to put a, put a yoke on them, and they can't help that. They, they'll buck and they'll rear and carry on because they don't want that on them. God said, I want to put a yoke on you because you're not getting it. So that's what he did with Ephraim. He said, turn to me. Sometimes we sit and wonder, wonder why all these things are going wrong in my life right now. I try to do the right thing. I go to church on Sunday sometimes. And, and, and sometimes I, if I don't go, I do go on Christmas and Easter. And so we act like that God owes us all this stuff. God don't really owe us anything. We owe him. And the fact that he reaches out to us and say, I want to love you. I want to take care of you. I want to help you. Sometimes we don't get it until we get a spanking. We have to get a whipping. And then we get it. Then we say, wow. You know, he must really mean what he's saying. I know when I left home, I got married early, and I, my husband was in the military, and we immediately started going other places from home. I wasn't serving God. I didn't want to serve him. I felt like I had I heard enough about God at home. Look, I, I, I got to be free, I said. Stupid. I got to be free. My husband took me to Germany, and when I got there, I immediately didn't like it. If you're German, please don't be offended. I didn't like it. Rain, 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 rain. Uh, right after we got there, my husband was... Had to go away to, to the fulfilled training. So that meant 30 days or either 14 days you were going to be by yourself trying to make your way. Couldn't drive over there uh, because I'm telling you, in Germany, they look like if you don't get over, we're going to come over you. And after looking at that for a while, I didn't even want to drive. But I, I thought, boy, this place is not playing. When they start uh, flashing that light and pulling it back and forth and they're saying get out of my way at 120 miles an hour, you better get out of their way. So I wasn't really uh, interested in that, but I found myself feeling totally alone and nobody there for me, no family, nothing, just me and the kids. I didn't go to church. I decided I'm not going to church. I'm going to do my thing. But God had something for me. It happened 50 years ago. I shall never forget it. And my husband was a very good soldier. He was often... Uh, commended by uh, his superiors for the great job that he did as a soldier. God got me right through my husband. He got a way of getting you. It may be your mother. It may be your children. It may be a sister or brother. Anybody you are extremely close to, God will come down and get your attention right there. So he chastises us and corrects us for us to come in. But sometimes we don't pay attention. And God said, I'm going to let something happen in your life you're going to pay attention to. So I remember, I can't remember what day of the week it was. It probably was the weekend because Charles always said, I'm going to get a drink. He went out, you don't drink German beer. You get drunk off of a little bit of German beer. I mean, stark drunk. And so 
my husband had, had about a few of them. And that night, he got in an accident, but he was, he was so high, he shouldn't have never been driving. And he sideswiped somebody on the highway, and he didn't even know he, he had sideswiped anybody. That's how drunk he was. So I looked out the window and saw the car. Your parking space is here. I, he's parked like this. Now, something is wrong with that because why you park across somebody else's driveway drunk? So he came in and I thought, I didn't know anything had happened. And the, when he hit the side of the car, his license plate on his car dropped off. Don't God know how to get you? <laughs> it fell on the ground. So when the MPs came, they found this license plate and said, hey, here's the guy. He's gone. But we got his license plate. Well, they soon came to the house to get him, and, and they restricted him to the post at the time. And boy, was I uptight. What am I going to do? I don't know how to handle this. What's going to happen? Because there's going to be some kind of punishment for you driving that car drunk and hit somebody and keep going. As a soldier, you're going to pay for it. Or if you're not a soldier, you're going to pay for it. So... My husband, they took him back to the post and restricted him to the post and said, you cannot go home for, for an indefinite period of time. Well, I'm already lonely by myself. Now, he's going to stay on the post. Yeah, he's got to stay on the post. I could go visit him on the post, but he couldn't, uh, he couldn't come home. I said to my husband, I said, Charles, I think you better pray and ask God to uh, help you with this situation. I'm praying. I ain't prayed in I don't know how long. I'm praying. I'm asking God to help me. I got to get through this situation. Trouble oftentimes in our life causes us to wake up and say, you know what? God's trying to tell me something. I better listen to him. And so even though this woman had tried to get me to go to church many times, I'm telling this for y'all's benefit because I don't want you just to come to church today. Come, come next week too, okay? And so if you don't, God will meet you somewhere and get you over here. And so, and so, uh, uh uh, I, I, I mean, this lady had called me so many times and said, well, could you go to church with me? I said, well, I can't. You know, my, my baby's sick or my husband's got duty. Or, I told, well, I tell so many lies I couldn't keep up with them. And so that night, after that happened, I went to get on my knees for a change and said, God, if you help Charles to get out of this situation, I'll serve you. I'll do what's right. I'll go to church and all these things. I was telling the Lord all this stuff. Well, then they busted my husband from a staff sergeant down to a corporal. And you know, every military person know them stripes on your arm, they save money. You know, you got one, you ain't getting much. You got two, you get a little bit more. You got three, you got, but them stripes mean money. If they take them stripes, how are you going to do this with three kids? Come on. And now they're going to bust him down, they said to a corporal. Well, in the process, I was praying and crying, and God, please, you got to get me through this. And what are we going to do if they take his stripes from him? How are we going to make it financially? How are we going to make it? I prayed. I prayed. And one day I got a knock at my door. I'll never forget it. Colonel Bennett came to my house. He, he uh, thought the world of my husband. And he came to my house, and he said, Miss Banks, I don't know what brought this about with Sergeant Banks. He said, but... He said, he is a great soldier. He works, in this, works with special weapons. He's, he's just an outstanding, his record is stellar. He said, now they want to reduce him to a corporal. He said, but I tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I have nothing but the most confidence in Sergeant Banks that he, he would continue to go on and be a great soldier. He said, if they, if they reduce him to a corporal, he said, since I have the last say, he said, I'm going to push it back up to a sergeant. Yeah, that was a little more money, but wasn't that E6 money? So I was thankful for that. So all this time, he sat there and talked to me. I had prayed, God, would you please send an answer to me from somebody, anybody. And he said, uh, I'm going to work with him. I cried and I cried. Sometimes people need something to happen in their life until they cry 
They say, God, what must I do? You're here today because God let you be here. You know what? Every day of our life, we owe God our life every day because he's done so much for us. My husband stayed on the post a little bit longer and finally came home. And I went to the club. We visited in the chapel of all places. And I, I believe that somehow God had let this happen to me because wake up, Rose. Wake up. You know what's right, but you're not doing it. There's a lot of people here this morning, you know what's right, but you're not doing it. When you're doing wrong, you know you're doing it wrong, and you just keep doing it anyway. So God said, when you get here to Sister Rose Church this morning, I'm going to get you. I'm going to tell you where you're at. I'm coming after you. I'm going to break you up and tell you the things that's been going wrong in your life is going wrong because you won't give your life to God. And if you really want to be happy, if you really want to be fulfilled, that's what you need. You need God in your life. You're not going to be happy without him. And so I can remember I would be, I would be so depressed. I would get in the German. The German bathtub is really tall. It's real deep, but it's, it's narrow. If you're fat, you're in trouble. But you, you I mean, it's really, really tall. So, you, I mean, the water can come up on up here just sitting in it. So I got in the tub. I was so depressed. I got in the tub, and I thought, wow. And now I, I can't swim, so I don't fool with water except to take a bath. And so I'm in this tub that day, and I'm thinking, boy, I'm so depressed. And I thought in my mind, came to my mind, it had to be the devil said, would you just be proud of yourself? I said, now I'm not that depressed. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not that depressed that I'm getting ready to take my life. It ain't happening. See, I mean, no, I, I can live through some things. I, it ain't that bad yet. And, and to be honest with you, it was never going to be that bad for me. And so I, I say to you that through all of the depression and the sad days and the crying and the tears, God was getting my attention, saying, Rose, I want you for the kingdom. I anoint you to be a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ and pass it on to other people that they may know who I am. I wouldn't be here today if he hadn't let that happen in my life. Because everything was going pretty good, you know. Charles had a decent paycheck. The army never paid you a lot of money, but it was a decent paycheck. And God said, I need, to, I need to get that. I need to take some of that away. Because you need to understand, everything you got in your life comes from me. Everything in your life comes from me. And so we don't stop, stop to say thank you. We think it's the government that give us a check. We think it's this thing that happened. But in actuality, God is making a way for us. Think about that. And if he's making a way for you, you need to stop and say thank you. You know what? We see, tend to want to talk to God when things are bad, but not when they're good. So sometimes bad things come our way, but they wake us up. They make us say, oh, I don't want to be here. I need to change this. The decision that you're about to make even today, you better think about it. Bad decision. Doing something you shouldn't do. Making plans that, and no, without a doubt, I shouldn't do this, but I'm doing it anyway. I'm, having, I'm dating somebody I should not be dating. See, if you want to, most of the time I counsel with any woman, uh, the bottom line is a man. When they come crying, says, Rose, can I talk to you? Sure, you can talk to me. What is it, honey? Well, it's, it's my boyfriend. It's this guy. Sometimes we're hooked up with something we shouldn't be hooked up to. If it's going to make you unhappy, if it's going to make you sad, why are you hooked up with it? But when you say, come and let God do something in your life, we don't want to do that. I'm not ready for that. I'm not into the God stuff, Sister Rose. No, I believe it'll work out. If you got hooked up with a bum, he's not going to wake up one day and not be a bum. It is what it is. So sometimes bad relationship, you can get hurt so bad that you say, you know what? I'm going to turn to God. I'm going to, God. I'm going, I'm going to get my life right. I hear this from people. I'm going to get my life right. Except they keep putting it off and putting it off. You can't put it off too long because time runs out on you. So God says, I'm going to have to wake you up. Apparently, you're too, you're too sleepy. You're in this deep sleep, and you're doing all these things. You're getting drunk. You're, you're drugging it up. You're at the club, whatever. And you're going through all this stuff. But now one time we're thinking about God. Trouble makes men think about God. When things are rough and hard and you can't hardly see your way through it, it causes men to turn to God. You know what? You should.
she had turned to him before then, but that's not, that's not what happened. Take a look at it. If something suddenly comes into your life, just out of, seemingly out of nowhere, rest assured is trying to tell you something. Don't just sit back and say, well, I'm not a bad person. That's not good enough. I got to be what God wants me to be. Whatever that is, that's what I want to be. Because my life is in shambles. The only person that can put it back together is God. That's the only one. If you wrapped up in situations and things and you say, well, there's nothing I can do, Sister Rose. I just, you know, I'm trying to get my life together. Sometimes they get in, in the prayer line and I'm praying for people. And they'll say, I'm trying to change my life. But you don't see them in church. You can't change your life. Start going to church. Get into an environment that causes you to think about God. Because if you don't get in an environment that causes you to think about him, you don't think about him. Think about him. So, understand, God wants to move for you and bless you. But he's saying, I may have to spank you for you to get the message. There's a lot of folks in here with a pal is just like this. You say, oh, God, don't tell me that. I mean, I come to church this morning to try to get lifted up. You, you're, you're putting me down. You know, I don't want to leave out of here worse than I came. No, you're going to leave out of here thinking, thinking about what's said and why things are the way in your life the way they are. For God speaketh once, yea, twice. Yea, man perceiveth it not in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep, deep sleep falleth upon men. And slumberings upon his bed. He opened the ears of man and sealeth their instruction that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. He keepeth back his soul from the pit and his life from perishing by the sword. He is chastened also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones strong pain. Sometimes Job is saying, sometimes God speaks once, he speaks twice, he speaks three times, you still don't listen. You done heard this before. You, 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 uh, you meet somebody who you don't know and they tell you the same thing back here your mama told you. And then you go on a little bit further, somebody tell you what your grandma said. It's like, can I get away from this stuff? No, God is trying to say to you, I'm trying to get your attention. So you can change your life. If you get on the wrong path, there's nothing on the wrong path but destruction. So we got somehow got to say, I need to change paths. Because it's not going to, if we continue to do everything the same way every day, and, and you didn't get any real results, something is wrong with that picture. If I do something consistently day after day, and I get the same results, somewhere in there, somebody's going to think you're insane. Because if I change, maybe things will change. If I start going to church, maybe things will change. If I start making a commitment to the Lord, things will change. And it will. You don't have to be miserable. You don't have to be unhappy. You don't have to be sad. I tell you, in spite of everything that I've gone through in my life, you know what? I wake up happy. I wake up happy. I had a 29-year-old daughter to die four, four years after her father passed away. Uh, a lot of things that were sent some people with their head in a, spin, in a spin, it didn't do that to me. Why? Because my focus was right. My desire was to please God, to do the right thing. Therefore, in time of trouble, he was there for me. The reason why trouble is so bad, and he's not there for you, because you're not where you should be. You got to wake up and say, you know what? If everything in my world crushed and fell to the ground today, what would I do? Because we put so much confidence in things and situations and people. Don't do that. Put your confidence in God. Because sometimes people mean well. They really do. That I'm going to help you. I'll be here for you. But in actuality, he may not be there for you. He may not be there by choice or he may not be there because he had no choice. Think about it this morning. What is God going to have to do to you to spank you real good and you say, boy, I need to get up and get it together. It didn't take me but a minute to know God was talking to me big time. I thought, I'm, I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going to pray. Why weren't you praying before then? Well, didn't too much want to do that. Didn't want to go to church, told one lie after another. You know what? All the people I see here this morning, it would be grand if you showed back up tonight, I would be shocked. 
because you're here this morning saying, wow, yeah. Did you see that? Oh, that's so nice. But you don't plan to come back. Sunday morning is all I'm going to give God, really. God said, I can fix you where you'll give me Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I can fix that. I said, I don't really, I don't feel the need to do all that. It's something going on in here that's not going on out there. So, yeah, what about it? You got six days a week. You're either going to be working for somebody or doing something that you want to do. And God said, can I have Sunday? Can I have Sunday? I used to sit at the desk and shake people's hand at the end of the service until I got so tired from sitting there when people lined up all the way back over here. Everybody won't, so I quit going to the desk. But when I was at the desk, I would say, are you coming back tonight? And one woman just came by and said, I don't really want to lie to you because I'm not coming back. Why not? Well, we're going to do something else tonight. You think you gave God a few hours on Sunday morning out of a whole week, and you think you don't owe him more than that? You wouldn't take that from your husband. Well, honey, I'll see you next weekend. Where are you going? You're not coming back home? Well, I'll be back next weekend. And then when he comes, he only stays a short period of time. You're going to have a problem with that. Well, I mean, where are you spending your time at? God says, where are you spending your time? Adam committed, uh, he committed sin, and God said, he went out to the, to the garden and said, Adam, where are you? Adam was here out because he done sin. He knew it was wrong. The same way a lot of you know what you're doing is wrong. So now God has said, Adam, where are you? Adam is hid out with some fig leaves, covering himself up because he's naked. He wouldn't know he was naked except he sinned. And now he tells God, Lord, I'm, I hid out because I was naked. He said, who told you you were naked? I told my daughter the other day, I said, if nothing good came out of the Garden of Eden, at least it meant that we put on clothes. Can you imagine running around the earth with a bunch of naked people? I thought if nothing else came out of that, we had to put on some clothes, but we found out we were naked. And some of the human bodies are not nice to look at. And so thank you, God. And it wasn't long before Adam is saying to God, this woman you gave me had me to take of this fruit. It was her fault, God. Don't we like to blame it on our husband or our wife or our children or somebody else? This is what's going on, God. It's him. It, he did it. He didn't have to take of that fruit. He didn't have to partake of the fruit. God told him the same thing he told Eve. Why did you say, Eve, we shouldn't do this? No, I did it because she wanted me to. Since when did do a man start doing what a woman wants him to? Since when? They're quick to, they're quick to want to correct you. Who are you talking to? My husband used to say to me when I would say, Charles, I want you to do this. He would say, are you asking me or telling me, Rose? And I said, well, it doesn't make any difference. He said, oh, yeah, it makes a difference. If you're telling me, I'm not doing nothing. I mean, if you're asking me, then I can accommodate you. Something's wrong up here. <laughs> or me being the pastor, and he's not the pastor, he would say to me sometime when I was talking to him about things, he would say, is this the pastor talking or Rose talking? I said, it's the pastor. Okay, I'll take care of it. Otherwise, no. So we want to do what we want to do and hang out in the wrong places. The, the, I, mean, I mean, the Garden of Eden was a beautiful place. God said you could have everything in this garden, eat of every tree, just this one. Don't bother that. What is it about man that said, I want that? What's he, why did he want us to touch that? <laughs> well, the fruit looks good to me. Why, why did God, do, he's telling you, I, here's some things I don't want you to do. Here's the things I want you to do. You need to learn obedience. Because we don't like to obey. That's why I want to get away from our parents and everybody else. They want to tell me what to do. Don't run my life, mom. You, you'll come a time you'll wish mom had was still running your life. See? The Lord hath chastened me sore, David said. But he hath not given me over to death. He didn't kill me. But, oh, God, I thought I was going to die when he got through with me. But you've come out a better person than you've ever been in your life. When God came after me, he changed this girl. He made me a new person. He made me a happy person. He took away all the sadness and depression and all that garbage and gave me a real life. 
See, you really think you're living this morning. I'm going to tell you, you've never lived until you know him. That's where exciting joy comes from. Happiness. Boy, I feel so good today. Why do you feel good? It ain't because everything is perfect in my life, but it's because God makes me happy. He keeps me with joy. He keeps me being excited. I'm having a ball. Look at what you, what else, what else do you do? That's all you do is go to church? Yeah. And we do family things. We have cookouts. We, we take rides out if you want to take one. We can do all kinds of stuff. Well, you know, so is this church every Sunday? Why don't you want to come and see God at least once a week? Once a week? Your creator, the one who lets you breathe today, the one who's there for you, why don't you want to come once a week? Yeah, I know you're going to have a hard time next Sunday. Say, my wife says, she said we should go home and see God. Man, I'm trying to get this stuff out of my head because <laughs> before I went to that church, I didn't even think like that. I'm going to leave a thought in your mind. that When you go out of here, you're not going to be the same. A girl came to this church some years ago. She heard about the church. She came. Her boyfriend wouldn't come with her. And he said, I don't think you should go with Sister Rose's church. She said, well, why not? Because you ain't going to be the same if you go over there. Well, is that is that better or good? Is that better or bad? She came to church. He was waiting for her at home in the bed. And um, I was preaching that morning about shacking. You need to get married. You don't need to shack. And wondering why he's not there. Shacking won't get you that. See? If I'm going to have everything from you I want before I say I do, why should I say I do? Why should I? And we got more single people today, not by choice, but because there's nothing left. There's no surprises. There's nothing left. And, I, and it killed me when they said we're going on a honeymoon. Why, well, you've been shaking for you. You have a honeymoon. Are you kidding me? We're going to go on a honeymoon. You don't have one. You had it. See? But you got to think. I was getting ready to go somewhere with that. It'll be back. Huh? Oh, yeah, that's right. She was shacking with this man. So I was preaching, oh, you shouldn't do that. You need to get married and, and don't just give yourself up to in and everybody. Have something special about you that's different from all the other women. That I just don't go to bed with you. That girl went back home and she sat down in the chair. He was in the bed. And he said, he said, he said, what's wrong with you? Nothing. You're not getting in bed? She said, no, I'm not. I told you not to go over to Sister Rose's church. You, you couldn't be the same after you go there. He never been here, so somebody must have told him. She said, I just can't, I just can't do it. I don't feel right. That's the word of God that comes to convict you in your heart and your mind and say, get out of there. Don't go down that road. And then I keep asking him, when, when are we going to get married? He's thinking, baby, are you kidding? We ain't getting married. I mean, the ring I gave to you, I gave to Jane. And when I finish with you, I'm going to give it to somebody else. See? And God is trying to say, don't give yourself away. If you're going to give yourself away, give yourself to me. I'm the one that's going to be there for you. I'm going to help you. I'll never leave you, and you'll never wonder where I've been. Because wherever you are, that's where I will be. I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. I'll be there for you. So what do we choose? We choose people that is automatically going to cause us some, some pain, some suffering. I told the story many times about, about I went on a date with my, my older sister, and 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 Tom, Tom, Tommy didn't have a date. I said, well, why don't you just go and do Tommy's date? I went out with him, went to the club. I did not like Tommy. And so by the time we got back to the house, my sister and the girlfriend, they, they were in the room with their boyfriend. And I'm sitting on the couch thinking, no. 
I'm not going to the bedroom. <laughs> so he wasn't a very nice looking guy. I kind of partial to that. And so at least have something that I'm looking for. There was nothing with Tommy. He was a great guy. He was nice. He was cordial. He was a gentleman. He was all that. Except I don't think I was looking for a gentleman. I'm looking for a crazy joker. Somebody that's kind of wild. You know, not some this little nice boy. And so he sat there for a while. He talked to me and I talked to him. And he started moving toward me like he's going to kiss me. I thought, I can't do it. You can't do it. So I just kind of turned my head away like, I th- I, you're not attractive. There's nothing about you that says, hey, nothing. I mean, nowhere. <laughs> but then I met my husband, who was absolutely no good. You talking about a womanizer. Good looking. Whoa. First time I saw him, I thought, wow, I like that guy. (sighs) He was grown. He was 22. I was 17. I like that man. He ain't no good. He ran with my brother. My brother said, Rose, don't waste your time with him. He's no good. I said, there's some good in him somewhere. (laughs) And I surely can find it. I surely can find it. Smooth talker. I hate any man that's full of gab. They got more talk and they can't deliver. It's true. My husband was cool. Cool. Didn't say much. Just cool. That's who I wanted. Not Tommy. Tommy said to my sister, Rose, would I marry her today? I thought, no, he will not. No, I won't. But you know what? We get ourselves in so much unnecessary pain and suffering because we do it ourselves. And what is it about man that always wants something that's not good? And I want to play the field because it's exciting. I want to go over here and do this and do that. But God says, come here. I want to help you with your life. I don't want you to be heartbroken and torn apart and, and hook it with the wrong person. Come to me. I will love you. He's going to whip you, but he won't kill you. You'll think he will. He he is, but he won't. Because why? He loves you. He cares about you. I want to make your life good. I don't want to get, I don't want to destroy you. I want to bring you to a place of true happiness. But you ain't going to find it unless you find it with God. How many people went to college, uh, had a career of some sort, and they said something is still missing? It's called God. He says, come to me. If you don't, I will come and get you. I will come and get you. Don't let him have to come and get you. It's not good all the time, the way it happens. If we understand one thing, when God raises his hand of correction to bring us in, we don't know what it's going to be because every one of us take a different type of way. Somebody's going to move on this. Somebody's going to move on that. Somebody's going to move on something else. And somebody's not going to move at all. Until God just put them all the way down. And then they say, hey, I need to get it right. I went to visit a rest home here some years ago. And the lady in the rest home was sitting there in a wheelchair. And she, was, she wasn't old. She, she looked maybe in her 50s. And I looked at her and I said, how are you? She said, I'm fine. I said, what are you doing here? She said, you wonder why I'm doing what I'm doing here? I said, yeah. She said, the way I treated my husband. You won't believe how I treated my husband. I treated him so bad. That's why I'm sitting here in this wheelchair. When God come and get you, you know it was God, and you know why he came to get you. You know when you're going through that, that's why I'm going through it, because I did this and I did that. I didn't listen. I wasn't going to take advice from anybody. You know what's going on. She said, that's why I'm here. see people in certain situations you got to ask yourself what brought you here something brought you to this place what was it and we don't always like to deal with having to change things we all all of us had a plan for our own lives see we all of us did 
But he said, I correct you, I chasten you, and I have to punish you. And to cause you to be more humble and restrained. That you just don't let it all hang out. I want you to be humble. Humble yourself. Quit talking so big and boastful. I'll bring you down. You don't want to do that. See? So, if we look at where we are today, say, I think God's trying to tell me something. That I, I need to get it together. I need to make a decision that friends and people are telling you, you don't have to make, you don't have to do that. Why do you want to do that? Maybe things ain't going bad in their life right now. But if your life is turned upside down, find your way to God before he comes and finds you. And I'm telling you, he will punish people. He, that was, he's a loving God. He sure is. I love my kids too, but I punished my kids when they did wrong. Because punishment says, I need to kick it in. Punishment says, you shouldn't do that no more. Punishment says, wake up. This is wrong. You can't do it. That's what God is saying. What you're doing is wrong. You're not paying attention. You're not listening. I'm going to have to shake you. Job said one time, he has picked me up and shook me to pieces. Trying to get my attention. Trying to get me to look up and say, God, help me. You're here this morning for a reason. God is saying, come to me. Come to me. Because I'm not quite ready for that yet. I'm, well, you're going to have a miserable life. Why do you want to stay there? And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastiseth not? See, I'm doing this because I love you. I didn't think my grandmother would love me when she would whip me with the peach tree switches. I'm thinking, I like to get it and whip you with it. She had peach tree switches. Waiting at home when I got in from school because I done done something I shouldn't have done. And she's got these switches there. You can smell them when you open the door. Whoa, it's peach tree switches here. She done got on a bus and rode all the way out to a friend's house who had a peach tree to get some switches to whoop my rear end when I got home. I played hooky one day and didn't go to school, met with my cousin. She went to Hadley Tech. I went to Vashon, and, and we decided we'll meet and go over to the, over to the movie theater. Well, my grandmother never allowed us to go to, to go to the theater. And so I told my cousin, I, I said, so why don't we just skip class today and we go? Well, I didn't know what was playing in the theater. I was just going to the theater. And when I got there, it was a strip tease movie on. People were stripping down and stuff. And, and here come this guy who knows my grandmother very well. He comes up to me in the dark, and he said, aren't you Grammy's daughter? I said, no. Not Granny's daughter. He said, I know. He said, you look like Rick. Everybody in the, in the neighborhood called me Granny. He said, you look just like Granny's daughter. I said, I'm not. I said, you have me mixed up with somebody else. I was a terrific liar. And he said, he, he left me for a moment. And I told my cousin, I said, let's go to the other side of the theater. I said, he going to come over here and ask me if I'm Granny's daughter. I'm not being bothered with him. Well, he works the theater, so he knows where his seat is. So I moved to the other side, me and my cousin, and he comes over there. He said, you can't hide from me in here. And he said, I'm going to tell your grandmother you over here in the Roosevelt Theater, and you watching a striptease movie. He said, I'm going to tell your grandmother. I know she doesn't allow that. I said, like I said, you got me mixed up. <laughs> nah, that's not me. Honey, when I got home, my grandmother was very soft-spoken, sitting in a chair that faces the door. I walked in, she said, where are you going? I've been to school. And if you go and you are marked present in the home room, we used to call it the home room class, that's your first class. If you're marked present in there, then you, although the school will show you present for the entire day, though you are not present. So I said, you can call the school. I mean, I've been to school all day. She didn't know nothing about cutting class. She didn't know nothing about that. She said, well, no. So came over and said that you was down in the Roosevelt Theater watching strip tease dances. 
talking just as low, and them Peace Street switches laying back over there, and she got three of them tied together. And she said, go on in the room and lay your books down. Grandmother's going to have to work. Yes, ma'am. You need to stop lying, Rose. Yes, ma'am. So I got in the bathroom. I thought I just pad myself down with a bunch of newspapers. And I got the newspaper and I just put it all over, down in my shirt, on my back, and everywhere I could put it. And while I was undressed trying to get the paper in place, she opens the door and said, come on out of here. <laughs> You're going to get a whooping. And she was hitting me with that switch, and they're real long. So when they hit you, it wraps, kind of wraps around you. You don't forget it either. And I'm thinking, no, I didn't. I didn't. Stop lying. And she whooped me real good, all because that man was nosy. And went over and told my grandmother what was going on. Shouldn't have did it. So that's how God's going to surprise you. You doing your thing, partying, shaking it, getting it down. Hey, everything is going on. And all of a sudden somebody says, come here. Who is that? Oh, my God. Did you hear that? Ain't nobody heard him call them but you. Everybody says, I don't know what you're talking about. What are you talking about? Did you hear somebody call my name? All of a sudden, come here, Jeannie. Come here, John. I said, is, is there something wrong? Yes, you're wrong. And I'm getting ready to make you right. I'm getting ready to make you right. Today, you may encounter something today that brings this message back to your mind to say, is this what she was talking about? Yeah. See, I'm sparking your attention. So, Everything that's happening, if you know you're not doing it right, it comes back to your mind. You're not doing it right. You got to think, remember, you need to change this. You need to get your life together. Don't worry about the friends who don't want you to have it. Don't worry about them. God's coming for you all by yourself. Ain't got nothing to do with your friend. Come on. How many people sit in this room this morning and say, boy, I need to get up out of here. Some things I was planning as soon as the service was over, but the, I mean, this one got me scared to go out. I don't know if I should do that or not. Is she married? Yes, yeah, she's married. I'm just going to you know, take, take out for, you know, hamburger or something. Then they get on the phone and say, Jane, hey, I'm not going to be able to make it. Why not? I'm going to be able to make it. I, I can't tell you why I just can't make it. Because now I'm thinking. Where is God going to meet me at? He met me. He met people all over this room. He's going to meet you. What are you going to do? You're here this morning for a reason. This man, I always say to the Lord, let the right person get the money at the end. Let the right person get it. When that person got that money, God reminds you, you, you remember that Sunday? You went to church? And remember, you had a need? And remember, I picked you out. And I gave you something. Now, what are you going to give me back? Well, Lord, I never thought about that. <laughs> we'll start thinking about that. Start thinking about it. Because he's going to remind you. Because when you have another need, you're going to be saying, God, could you please work a miracle for me? Because I went to that church that Sunday, you took care of me. And God said, I ain't seen you since. <laughs> I haven't seen you since. So what are you going to do? Think about it. This morning, while our musicians and Singers are coming forward. I want you to stop for a moment and say, I need to get my life right. You don't have to have something bad to happen to you to get it right. It's just the nature of man not to give in. He wants to be free to do what he wants to do. This morning, I want to pray for you. If you're thinking about it this morning, God, here's what people tell me a lot of time when, I'm, when, I'm, when they come in the prayer line. They say, it felt like God was talking directly to me. I say, he was. He says a message that will touch everybody in this room, and it's the same message. Think about it. He wants to do something in your life, too. Yes. If you want to change, you can. I changed in a moment because I determined I had to change. I'm not living like this. I don't know what else is going to happen. Trouble drove me to God. Are you going to wait till something bad and terrible happen in your life to come to God? You don't want to do that. Give him a chance now. Whosoever will, let him come. Drink of the water of life freely. 
you can have that. So while our musicians are singing, I'm going to ask you to stand. And if you want prayer, I want you to get in the prayer line and say, you know what? I got to go and have, I got to find out who God is. I, I, I need to learn him. I need to change some things. I need to do some things right. He'll help you. I promise you he'll help you. God bless you. So while they're singing and playing, if you want prayer, would you please come? All over this building, you have to make that decision for yourself. Not for your boyfriend, not for your girlfriend, but for you. God don't deal with us on a twosome basis. It's one person. One person, come on and give him a chance. Yes. You can have your life changed today. Don't put it off. Some people may not even get a chance to get to him. You know why? They waited too long. You won't wait too long. He loves you. He cares about you. If I can show you how much I love you and what I'm willing to do for you, you can have it today. You don't have to wait until next week. God is all power. He can change you today. He changed me in a day because I wanted to be changed. He'll do the same for you.